Hey everyone, Danny Rowdy of DannyRowdy.com. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, today I wanted to talk about why I was wrong about Propecia, aka Finasteride. Uh, and this video could easily be ent uh, entitled, uh, Why Does Nitric Oxide, Minoxidil, and Wounding Regrow Hair? And I think you could throw in massage to that uh, that list of things as well. And before we get too far into it, I wanted to say I have a free book that you can go download. And I think that book is kind of the the birth and, and this video is like the extension of the ideas. Uh, I have a two hour series, which is I made after the book, trying to explain a lot of things that the book didn't really cover that well. I'm an Instagram. People always talk about dietary things and I try to post foods on there. Uh, and then I talk with people on Patreon that are motivated to have a conversation. So uh, those are just uh, housekeeping things. And the one other thing is I, I perceive a lot of messiness in this video. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to say that uh, I wanted to like omit my uh, uh, biases or biases, I don't know how you say it, uh, up front. And so I personally uh, am have an attention bias towards things that I consider safe, uh, things that uh, benefit the multiple aspects of uh, a boldness that I think are happening. So I consider it a multi-layered problem that gets worse as you get older. And I'm, I'm thinking about the, I'm trying to think about the whole person and, and how they're maladapting to their environment and they're not uh, uh, meeting the, the needs that they have because the environment is basically uh, too harsh, you know. Uh, and another way of saying that is promoting regenerative therapies versus types of therapies that are degenerative and, and in my opinion, more of like a parlor trick to <laughs> regrow hair. Uh, at the expense uh, at the per of the person's own health and a broad range of negative side effects. So the too long didn't watch uh, is nitric oxide is harmful for hair growth. And it's right in the center of all those things that I've talked about in this channel from estrogen, prolactin, cortisol, low thyroid function, uh, low carbon dioxide production. But uh, and more research is needed on this subject, but I suspect that a supra physiological amount, so uh, an amount a person would never, ne never normally experience uh, through using something like finasteride or minoxidil or to a lesser degree wounding and massage, I think those can increase nitric oxide, the vasodilative properties that nitric oxide has, and those uh, properties are at the expense of the, the person's health and their wellness and that can produce this cosmetic type of hair growth. And also I'm open to being wrong. So if you have a opinion that's uh, totally opposite and you think I've synthesized things completely wrong, please leave a comment and I'd be happy to get back to you. So the first thing I wanted to go through is just, just like a general overview of uh, hair follicle growth. So we could start at stem cells and a Brajack paper in 2014 they talk about stem cells, which reside in the adult hair follicle, are the skin's elixir for regenerating hair, but they also for maintaining tissue homeostasis and repairing the epidermis. And uh, there are a lot of people interested in uh, uh, like injecting stem cells and things like that. But I think I don't think it's a deficiency of stem cells. I think it's more the deficiency of energy that helps differentiate the stem cells into the complex mini organ that is the structure. Uh, and of course. Uh, there's another paper uh, that somebody I think sent me, but it was, it's called uh, compartmentation <laughs> of mitochondrial oxidative metabolism and growing hair follicles, a ring of fire. And they talk about how uh, the hair growth process is a highly pro proliferative process under glycolytic metabolism. And then that's umbrellaed, or I guess this is me interjecting now, but it's umbrellaed by mitochondrial energy metabolism, which is demonstrated in another paper by Tang uh, in 2016. And they talk about uh, hair follicle stem cells uh, being unable to differentiate if the mitochondria are impaired in any way. And so they say hair follicle stem cells uh, differentiation, mitochondria are elongated with more abundant cristae and shows higher activity accompanying with activated aerobic respiration and differentiated cells for higher energy supply. Also, the dysfunction of mitochondrial respiration delays hair regeneration upon injury. And so that one, I forget what paper this exactly is, but they talk about how the transition from telogen, uh, antigen into telogen is basically like a hair follicle injury. And then it should ideally regenerate 
under the supply of the thyroid hormone, the pregnenolone, the progesterone, the DHEA. And when a person, uh, their thyroid function declines, they accumulate lots of substances that interfere with their natural steroid production. The, the glycolytic metabolism of the hair follicle and differentiation, that's all going to be interfered with. And so I think, and also the, like I talked about in the last video, just the general warmth and that promoting melanin and things uh, that, that helps uh, maintain that delicate redox balance of the hair follicle, uh, it's going to be disturbed. So again, a entire view of the person, not just focusing on the, the hair growth. <laughs> and again, if somebody is like, you know what, I don't care about your, your fanciful ideas or whatever, that's okay. I'm just, I'm just, again, telling you my perspective on this. I, I understand that some people don't necessarily care. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm more interested in like solving a problem than just putting a, uh, bandaid over it. So hair follicles produce nitric oxide and Trub said that in 2003, uh, the, the Mariotto in 2007 said that uh, the accumulation of the polyunsaturated fats in the tissues might switch nitric oxide from like a, a physiological tone to a pathological tone. So as a person accumulates more polyunsaturated fats and they're embedded in the tissues and it tends to accumulate as a person gets older, when baldness tends to be occurring, the tone of nitric oxide tends to increase. Uh, and I didn't mention it, but I think uh, and Ray has talked about this pretty well, but that nitric oxide is a fill-in vasodilator when carbon dioxide is deficient. And of course, carbon dioxide is one of the real profound reasons that thyroid is is excellent by uh, helping turn the oxygen, sugar, uh, uh, and, and, and T3, go, zooming through the mitochondria to produce carbon, carbon dioxide, ATP, and water. And, in, and just to keep pulling from Ray, because he's really one of the only people I think ha has figured this out, but he says nitric oxide, like histamine, estrogen, lactic acid, and several other substances is a signal of injury uh, that is probably involved in a variety of renewal processes, such as the recruitment of stem cells. But it also seems to be a mediator of many stress signals. And when it's generalized and in excess amounts for prolonged lengths of time, a meaningless mobilization of stress reactions, hibernation, shock, metabolic arrest, weakened muscle contraction and nerve function, disorganized growth can result. And he says that the amount of nitric oxide in the body is probably an indicator of the quality of the environment uh, that we're adapting to. So in short, like a, a wound will produce nitric oxide to help, uh, help mobilize stem cells, but this is going to have a different function again when the thyroid is deficient, when the pregnenolone, and progesterone and DHEA are deficient. And this one paper talked about how uh, they could increase the flow of blood and, and, and repair and renewal by uh, applying gels with super physiological amounts of nitric oxide. This newest paper uh, in 2018 by Sasaki, they talk about how previously they, they thought that nitric oxide was good for hair, but that, that uh, through this animal rat experiment, they found that a nitric oxide in inhibitor uh, was a novel candidate for treatment of alopecia. Nitric oxide is a novel inhibitor of the antigen transition. Again, this, as far as I'm aware, nitric oxide is not something that's extensively studied in so-called androgenic alopecia. So again, I'm doing a synthesis here. And, uh, and so again, this is something that needs to be studied. Um, but I think part of the reason I'm making this video in my case is that uh, the thing that I was probably profoundly wrong about in my last video about Propecia or finasteride was I was thinking that, you know, uh, I, people have really bad effects from this drug, obviously, and Trace and multiple people have pointed that out in their papers, but it regrows hair. So it must be having some protective effect. And so I was, I'm making this video basically to hopefully correct my, uh, my mal thought, but, uh, I think and, and it is evidenced by these two papers that I'm about to read, but decreasing DHT actually increases nitric oxide. And so you're creating a super physiological amount of nitric oxide and vasodilation and increasing the flow of blood to the, to the hair follicles and, and occasionally causing regrowth, you know? So in this Colossa paper, they talk about uh, the, the expression of nitric oxide increasing uh, during a DHT deficiency. 
And this other paper, they say it's well known that androgen deprivation relates to penile fibrosis. So we hypothesize the long-term treatment with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors may increase the risk of fibrosis, fibrosis in the prostate. Um, and they show that the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor increases the nitric oxide. So the one thing I'm certain that many people say, you know, I'm taking Propecia or Finasteride for one, two, five, ten years, and I feel totally fine. Uh, so I think it's important to just point out that everybody's judgment of their quality of life is is different. And so I would hypothesize that people that think they're not being harmed by Finasteride probably have a ridiculously low quality of life. And again, uh, there probably has to be some kind of study on that. But again, Trace is just an uh, amazing researcher, and they've just been pointing out all the negative effects of inhibiting 5-alpha reductase. And they say that we suggest that finasteride and dutasteride uh, inhibit 5-alpha reductase activities and reduce the clearance of glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids, potentiating insulin res resistance, diabetes, and vascular disease. So increasing... Uh, cortisol, aldosterone, et cetera. And like these hormones make people feel terrible. And so it's just, uh, just have a super hard time uh, accepting that somebody is feeling okay with these. And also uh, everybody's judgment of what is normal in this weird culture is, is totally different. So somebody like having a, a crazy aggression or something could be attributed to their familial history or genetics or whatever, when it was actually their uh, warped stress physiology, you know? So again, you have to kind of uh, assess things several layers here. And Trish also pointed out that uh, I think uh, people using 5-AR inhibitors like finasteride have higher osteoporosis. Uh, already talked about that. Um, okay, so I, again, I think wounding using a derma roller or massage is obviously much less risky than using finasteride or minoxidil. But I just have to point this out. And so Rob English, who owns the Perfect Hair Health site, seems like a nice guy. Uh, I think in his recent paper in 2019, he talks about the massage uh inducing a mild uh, erythema, which is like an inflammatory skin condition. So induced by massage and uh, he, he's promoting this. So he says the materials emphasize the importance of acute inflammation generation as evidenced by mild uh, erythema by the end of uh, SSM that stands for some massage technique and tissue stretching to mimic potential mechanis mechanistic overlap from SBTs and mechanotherapies previously shown to uh, therapeutic effects on the human scalp hair. And so again, my, I get asked about this all the time. My general stance is that I think the, the balding individual, it's a marker for serious future health problems. And so it should be addressed in a serious way of various levels of life, lifestyle intervention. And so I'm concerned about saying, yeah, massage when uh, it, it's a very serious problem and I, I can't, doesn't sit right with me to talk about massage. And now it especially doesn't sit right because I, I think this again, falls in line with that injury to increase nitric oxide, mobilize the stem cells, the vasodilation occasionally forming in a, a new hair follicle. Uh, but I would guess similar to minoxidil and finasteride, this is just a temporary cosmetic type of thing. And so ideally uh, a person could make many layers of lifestyle intervention from diet to thyroid to aspirin, whatever, uh, to improve the situation versus injuring themselves to try to promote uh, hair growth in any way. And again, I just I, anybody that's skeptical of this nitric oxide being a, a harmful thing, I would encourage them to read McCann's Nitric Oxide Hypothesis of Aging paper in 1998, which is just beautifully done. And he talks about it just being... Uh, it, um, central in the inhibition of mitochondrial respiration. And I don't know a lot of uh, people not talking about mito the inhibition of mitochondrial metabolism being central in disease from vegan diets to carnivore diets. They'll give some kind of lip service to this idea. And I think Ray is really the, the person that I think has thought through this idea the most. And he's pulling from people like Albert St. Georgie, Otto Warburg, Hans Selye, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, again, I think 
the amount of nitric oxide, like he said, probably indicates the person's like real biological age and their uh, level of functioning. And so again, just to make it totally clear, somebody can uh, is t- feel free to totally reject this and say, you know, I need to do everything I can to try to regrow hair in a cosmetic way. You know, I totally understand that. Again, I have attention bias towards things I consider safe, uh, att- attention bias towards regenerative, safe, cheap therapies, you know, that a person can do themselves. And, uh, and this kind of brings it home, but in Ray's from PMS to menopause book, Uh, This is about estrogen, which increases nitric oxide. Uh, But he does a question and answer, and he says, uh, uh, doesn't everyone have the right to decide what's best for them? What if they feel like estrogen is working for them and eliminate symptoms? And Ray's reply is, that is reasonable if you have access to the best information on the beneficial and harmful effects of the treatment. This book is to help you decide whether you have the information and need uh, you need on questions of that sort. Many people have felt like they understood treatment and benefited from it, but later learned that it seriously harmed them. For example, many people were given large doses of x-rays to treat their acne or ringworm or sinus inflammation or enlarged thymus gland with their physician's assurance that it was the safe and effective and universally accepted treatment, only to discover that the treatment caused cancer or brain damage or deformity or loss of immunity. I actually know somebody that was treated with uh, radiation uh, to, for their acne, so this is actually something I've talked with them about. Um, yeah. And again, uh, progesterone, DHEA, aspirin, intestinal disinfectants, like the safe antibiotics I've talked about thyroid, getting your bloods, uh, your blood work measured. So it, it, you're not just listening, uh, 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 implementing things I'm saying on here. So you have valid information about yourself and those things would all lower nitric oxide, uh, decrease max mass cell activation, increase the temperature of the tissue, which, uh, reinforces its structure, lowers endotoxin, decreases the prostaglandins, increases the carbon dioxide. And so again, a uh, kind of a view of the person, you know, what they're going through. And in, in these things should improve many areas of a person's life rather than just treating the problem like a, cos- a cosmetic one. Okay, that was it. Thank you guys so much. Sincerely appreciate it. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Motivate me to make more of these. Uh, I have a uh, every other week live stream with Georgie Dinkov and other people, and it's been amazing so far. So uh, definitely subscribe to to get that every Friday, every other Friday. Uh, I have an amazing listenership. Thank you guys so much. Sincerely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.